Hi everyone. Welcome back to our high availability cluster setup tutorial. In part one, we covered the initial setup, installed the necessary packages, and configured the network interfaces. We also enabled and started Pacemaker, Chorusync, and Samba. If you haven't watched part one yet, I highly recommend checking it out first. The link is in the description below. Today, in part two, we'll focus on configuring the cluster resources using CRMSH, setting up DRBD, and performing failover testing to ensure high availability. Let's dive in. Let's check the CRM status to see if the nodes are online. Node 1 is online, but Node 2 does not seem to be in CRM node list. Let's check the CRM status on Node 2. Node 2 is online as well, but Node 1 is not showing in the CRM node list. This is because we haven't configured the CRM yet. Once we do that, you'll be able to see both Node 1 and Node 2 in the CRM node list. Let's configure the cluster resources with the CRMSH command. Type CRM configure to enter configuration mode. First, let's set some important cluster properties. These settings will ensure our cluster behaves as expected in various scenarios. We're disabling Stoneth, which is a fencing mechanism to isolate faulty nodes, and setting no quorum policy to ignore, which allows our cluster to continue operating even if a majority of nodes are not available. Now, let's define our cluster resources. We have four main resources, Samba, DRBD, a file system, and a virtual IP. Samba will handle our file sharing and we'll monitor it every 30 seconds to ensure it's running smoothly. DRBD will manage our replicated storage. We'll monitor it every 29 seconds in the master role and every 31 seconds in the slave role. The file system resource will mount our DRBD device to slash var slash www slash html using the extension for file system. This is our virtual IP address, which clients will use to access the services. We'll monitor it every 30 seconds. Next, we need to clone the DRBD resource and set it up with master-slave configuration. This ensures that only one instance of DRBD runs as master and it's properly replicated. Now, we need to set some constraints to ensure our resources start in the correct order and run on the appropriate nodes.
This ensures that the file system resource starts only after DRBD is promoted to the master role. Here, we make sure that the file system runs on the same node as the master DRBD resource. Samba should start only after the virtual IP is active. We ensure that Samba runs on the same node as the virtual IP. The virtual IP should start only after the file system is mounted. And we ensure that the virtual IP runs on the same node as the file system. To save the configuration we've made, type in commit and type in quit to exit configuration mode. With everything configured, let's check the cluster status to make sure our setup is correct. Looks like we have an issue here. Node 1 is online, but Node 2 does not seem to appear in the node list. On Node 2, Node 2 is online, but Node 1 is not in the list including resources. Maybe there is something wrong in the Coruscant configuration file. I'm going to find a mistake in this configuration file. Please take note. When typing in the configuration file, always make sure there are no indentation mistakes, extra spaces, incomplete configurations, etc. Make sure to check the configuration files on both nodes thoroughly. It may take a while, so please bear with me. I'm going to restart Pacemaker and Coruscant to see if they restart successfully. Do this on both Node 1 and Node 2. Now both Node 1 and Node 2 are in the node list, but they're currently offline and stopped. Since Pacemaker and Coruscant just restarted, it may take a minute or a few seconds for them to come online and start. Finally, we have successfully create a high availability cluster. Now we'll test the failover capabilities. We'll simulate node failures and ensure that services are correctly transferred to the secondary node. Let's check the directory of the mounted DRBD device on slash var slash www slash html. There is one folder called lost plus found. This folder is created with DRBD we set up in part one. Its purpose is to store recovered files and directories found to be corrupt or orphaned during a file system check. Before doing a failover test, I'm going to connect the client virtual machine to test out Samba.
Enter the virtual IP address of the cluster to access the shared folder. We've gained access to the shared folder. Let's create a text file to test the setup. Let's check if the text file is present in the node directory. Now that we've tested the virtual IP address in Samba, we can test out failover. If we try to list the directory slash var slash www slash html on node 2, there is no file. This is because node 2 is currently in the slave role, so the DRBD device is unmounted. It will only mount when the role switches. To test out failover, we'll reboot node 1, which is currently the primary. Then, go to node 2 and type in CRM status to see if the role has switched. Node 2 is now promoted to primary, and all resources are being handled by Node 2. Node 1 is offline because we just rebooted it. Let's see if the files appear on Node 2. There is a lost plus found in the text file we created inside the directory. Maybe Node 1 has finished rebooting. Let's check the CRM status again. Node 1 is back online. If you check Node 1, it is now unpromoted, which means its current role is secondary and it will be in standby mode. Let's reboot Node 2, the primary node, and check the failover process again. Now node 1 is promoted as primary and node 2 is demoted to secondary. We have completed the high availability cluster with DRBD, Corusync, and Pacemaker, along with failover testing. In this video, we configured our cluster resources using CRMSH, verified the cluster status, and tested failover. High availability and reliable failover are crucial in production environments to ensure uninterrupted service. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Tech Priority.